touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened and now I know he touched me and made me whole. Since I met this blessed Savior, since he cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise him. I'll shout Something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me whole. Sing it again. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. my soul. Something happened and now I know he touched me and Good morning. The attendance pads are on the street side of the sanctuary. Please pick those up, sign your name, and pass them across. Uh, just an observation, which you may notice by the time this worship is over. Um, Steve has really stepped up today <laughs> because um, we're missing a lot of our leaders. Pastor Ron's out fishing. <laughs> Pastor Bob is trying to get healthy. Rod is on his way out of town for a week. Who's left? Oh, Rob Schleff is in Portugal. So, um, Steve, thank you. He's not only preaching and kind of carrying on here, but he's also doing the park this morning. So, uh, don't forget to thank him and pray for him this morning. It's going to be a long day. <laughs> it's always good to know that we have so many people in this congregation that will step up and do things when needed. And what a blessing that God has given us in that way. For prayers this morning, we're going to uh, put our requests on the prayer cards that are in the pew racks. So if you have a praise or a, re a prayer request, please fill that out. And during the praise song, pass it to the aisle and someone will pick it up. I don't know who that someone is yet. Forgot to take care of that. So I see a couple of the... No, I, I think Veronica and Judy are going to take care of it. Thank you. <laughs> they, they just sort of step up <laughs> with a little help. <laughs> okay. Um, C's Candy Sale is going to reopen May 4th for Mother's Day and graduations. I will be needing some noontime volunteers for one week, um, so see me about that. I'll have the list over in Fellowship Hall. Celebrate Life is coming up. Look in your bulletin in the insert. Um, my goodness, they had a huge long rehearsal yesterday. This is going to be quite a production, so mark your calendars. You'll want to be here for this. Uh, watch the newspaper. We sent an article off to the newspaper. It'll be coming out soon. Uh, Don has written a, a real good review of what is going to take place, and you won't want to miss that. 
We have a couple birthdays this week. Uh, Friday, Jerry Mead and Sandra Crespo are going to have birthdays. And also in your bulletin is the financial picture, where we were at the end of March. Now, if you look at that, you'll notice that we were in the red at the end of March a little bit. I don't know where we are this so far in April, but let's hope that we get those parentheses out of there and we are back in the black by the end of April. So we pray that God will make those provisions available through our friends and members. Cheryl Leatherman is going to call us to worship this morning. Good morning, church. This morning I'm going to be re uh, reading from Revelation and it talks about loud voices and shouting. I can identify. So, <laughs> so um, first we're going to start with the Revelation 5. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice, they were saying, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Woo, hallelujah. After this, I heard what sounded like a roar of a great multitude in heaven shouting, hallelujah. hallelujah. Salvation and glory and power belong to our God. Then came a voice from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants. Let the, let's join the multitude in heaven this morning and praise ye the Lord. Amen? Amen. Salvation and glory and power belong to our God. Then came a voice from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants. Let the, let's join the multitude in heaven this morning and praise ye the Lord. Amen? Amen. I think the Spirit's working. We're going to sing, Raise a Hallelujah. And there's a part in this song that says, Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. So thank you, Cheryl, for getting us off on the right foot. Let's stand and raise a hallelujah. One, two, three, four. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the envy. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is the melody.
Okay, get ready now. Echo me on this. Watch the echo me, okay? Sing a little louder. Sing, Sing a little louder. louder. Again. Sing a little louder. 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 Sing with me. Sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder. Heaven comes to fight for me. Cheryl Leatherman would say. Of course, King David said that a lot too, didn't he? Praise the Lord. <clears throat> we learned this next song last week. Wonderful, merciful Savior. I'm going to give a little presentation on Peter and John at the... Uh, the gate of the temple, and it's a story of the wonder of Jesus' name, his mercy, and his healing power. So let's keep that in mind as we sing this song. We're going to play through the verse for you, kind of uh, jog your memories as to how this goes, okay? In
Hearts always hunger Good morning, everyone. Um, for you that don't know me, my name is Veronica, and I'm a deacon here. And I just, um, I'm doing the prayer today. But I wanted to share real quick that um, there's, we have a couple of groups in here that, are, that pray on Friday. If you're a prayer warrior, you're more than welcome to join us. If you have something really heavy on your heart that needs to be um, addressed quite fast, Lucinda Anderson is um, prayer chain. So reach out, um, we're here. We're, we're here to pray for you guys. And so as we go on to pray today, I just wanna thank everyone for being here. I get nervous, so. <laughs> so I just wanna start with, um, dear God, I come to you today with a heart full of thanks. Psalm 717 says, I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness and I will sing praise to the name of the most, to the Lord most high. I want to thank you and give praises to your name today. Father God, we just thank you for um, these prayer cards. We have um, praises, we have um, a lot of stuff here. But at the end of the day, Lord, we thank you that um, you're in control of everything. We thank you that you already knew us before you put us in our mother's womb, Lord. So we thank you for that. We wanna give praise for um, Melissa who hit 11 months sobriety, Lord. I thank you for her, Lord. But God, that is a big accomplishment. You know, I was sober there for a while, and then I, I dipped into the alcohol also, but now I'm also same day, month as um, Melissa, but a year longer, Lord, so I thank you for that. We, um, we want to lift up Pammy to you, Lord. She has some health issues, and we thank you that you're already working in her life. We want to lift up Daryl to you, Lord. He... Um, he we thank you for sending people to wherever he's at that know you, Lord, that will minister to, to him, Lord. So we thank you for Daryl's um, life, Lord, and for Richard, who has an appointment for plastic surgery, for plastic surgeon, for skin cancer, Lord. Um, Father God, we just want to lift him up to you, Lord. We ask that you give him comfort, Father God. We ask that you touch him. You touch his wherever he has that, that, Lord. And I ask, Lord, that you just make it go away, Father God, because you are a miracle killer, Lord. We thank you for that. And also for um, Dara, Lord. She's also battling cancer. And there's many, many more other people that are, are, are struggling, Lord. And so we just thank you, Father God, that um, you're in the midst of all this. 
Father God, we want to lift up our congregation to you. We want to lift up our um, people that we have on our paper, our, our request every Friday that we pray, Lord. We, we lift that up to you. Our bulletin, Lord, we have many people that are on here that need, that need your touch and healing, Lord. So we lift them up to you, Father God. And as we go on today, Father God, I just thank you for blessing us and allowing us to see another day. As we bow our heads before you this morning and seek to come into your presence, I ask your blood to wash us clean. As we begin our new day in prayer, I will ask you to keep us safe. I ask that you protect everyone against the evil one. May you surround us with a hedge of protection. Second Thessalonians 3.3 says, but the Lord is faithful in the and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. I believe you are indeed faithful and you are in, your words are true. In this world that we live in, we are surrounded by the mighty earthly things that fight for our attention and distract us. And I pray today, Lord, that you will help us to guard our hearts, our eyes, our ears from ungodly things. I pray that you will surround us, Lord, with your strength and might. Second Thessalonians 3.16 says, may, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. I believe that you are a God that has heard and answered our prayers. And I know they told me to go slow, but I went fast, and I'm sorry. So we want to finish off with um, our Lord's prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. As I mentioned, uh, how are we doing on the mic? This is, got to get a mic. And thank you, Mike, for, uh, you know, moderating the, the sounds and things back there. If I get too loud, you know, you can just turn me down. But as I mentioned, uh, this will be a little presentation. I, I like to change it up. They ask me to preach, and uh, you think, okay, well, I'll do the Ronnie thing. But then uh, the spirit kind of gets a hold of me, I think, and says, why don't you do what you've done before and give a dramatic presentation? There was a, uh, there was a leader of the Jesuits back in the 15th century. His name was Ignatius, actually the founder of the Jesuits, and he compelled people to put their imagination into the stories that we find in the Gospels. Pretend like you're there, he would say. And what do you see? What do you smell? What do you hear? And uh, what, what actor are you in that? So... Uh, I've taken that to heart on, on occasion, whether it's the Christmas story or the, the stories of Jesus' passion. And uh, as I was thinking about what to preach on here in this resurrection season, they say this is the fourth Sunday of Easter. I thought, the story in Acts talks about the resurrected Jesus, how he's still active even Though he had ascended to heaven, his followers were still proclaiming his name. So as Donna reads, Donna Reed, <laughs> as Donna reads the scripture, try and put yourself as an observer and uh, think, what do you see? What's going on? One day. Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer, at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, 
Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly, the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet, and he began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping, praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. I know the writer of those verses. His name is Dr. Luke. I like the way he described that day. The people were filled with wonder and amazement. It's been years since that day. For me, the wonder and amazement have never ceased. Oh, I should probably introduce myself. My name's Seth. It's a good Jewish name. There was a time when they just called me the beggar. Yes, I'm the man who was healed that day. The man who sat by the gate beautiful. And guess what? I can still walk. And... I can leap. Impressive, huh? Well, it may not be that impressive to you, but let me tell you something. I clearly remember those first 48 years and three months when these legs were absolutely useless. Immovable. I couldn't even stand. Had to be carried. Everywhere. Well, that all changed in one moment. And as I said earlier, I'm still amazed that these legs work. Not everyone believes me, you know. The story's out there, of course. Lots of people have read Dr. Luke. But a good portion of them shrug and say things like, I'd have to see it to believe it. Maybe you, too, are the skeptical type. I'm glad Dr. Luke wasn't a skeptic. He interviewed me, you know. He even examined my legs. He wanted his writing to be as accurate as possible. He wasn't there, but he believed. I wish there were more people like him a man of deep, deep faith. Oh, he had a scientific mind, all right. He was a medical doctor, after all. But he was full of the Spirit, too. Full of the Holy Spirit. That was one of Doc Luke's favorite phrases. He used it when he described what happened to me. Peter, he wrote, was filled with the Holy Spirit as he spoke to the rulers and the elders that day. Now there's another guy, Peter. I wish there were more like him, too. We became good friends after my healing, you know. After that day, my very first steps in 48 years, I wanted to kiss his feet. But no, he said. You need to praise God, not me. To this day, I'm amazed at Peter's humility. A simple, former fisherman. He was from Galilee. He doesn't put on airs, no self-importance. A regular guy. That's Peter. But I still remember his words to the people that day. Men of Israel, why does this surprise you? Why are you staring at me? Do you think that it's by our own power, by our godliness, 
that we made this man walk? It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given this man complete healing. Peter still says that. He'll catch me talking about the day that Peter healed me, and he'll take me aside and say, Seth, Jesus is the healer, not me. I do remember Jesus. I always sat there by the temple gate. I couldn't miss him. He taught in the temple a number of times. I certainly heard some of the stories about him. A prophet, people would say. A wonder worker. Some called him a charlatan. I can't say I listened to him much. I was too busy looking for handouts. I've been doing that for close to 50 years. Teachers had come and teachers had gone. More than one had claimed to be the Messiah. So to tell you the truth, I'd just grown numb to the hopes and claims of men that had crossed my path. If I got enough coins in my beggar's cup, enough to cobble together the cost of my daily bread, I, I didn't care about much else. The rumors about Jesus increased, though, till the day I heard that they'd marched him off to be crucified. I didn't know what charge they brought against him. I didn't care. There are often so many crucifixions outside of Jerusalem's gates. Rome has no love for us Jews. That's for sure. They could find many ways to accuse us and condemn us. And Jesus, I assumed, had just gotten in their way somehow. No doubt he'd been subject to a trial that was a sham, a quick verdict that was lean on justice, and that was it. Squashed like a bug. I remember thinking, just keep quiet. Stay out of their way. And that, of course, was something I could easily do. Hardly anyone notices a crippled beggar. Peter and John noticed me, though. On the day I'll never forget, they looked right at me. That in itself was surprising. Even people that dropped coins in my cup turned their faces away like they were ashamed giving away their money. Or maybe they felt guilty looking at my condition. Did they think it was their fault? I'd gotten into the habit of not looking at anyone. It wasn't out of embarrassment. Just just resignation. A cold resignation that had simply stopped caring what people thought of me. Peter's attitude was markedly different. He looked right into my eyes. He even said, look at us. I was a bit surprised. So I held up my cup. Who knows, I thought, maybe I'll get a significant donation. What Peter said next caught me off guard. Silver and gold I do not have, he said. So I lowered my cup. I was ready to ask him why he was wasting his time and mine too. But he kept on speaking. But what I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus, the Messiah of Nazareth, walk. He then took me by the hand and started lifting me up. I 
I have trouble describing the sensations that enveloped my body. These legs that had lain dead and useless for years and years were suddenly swelling with new life. It was like a warm glow surged through me from the base of my spine to the bottom of my toes. Walk, Peter had commanded. So still gazing intently into my eyes, suddenly, without even thinking, my body was obeying. In fact, I did more than walk. Before I knew it, I was jumping and <laughs> dancing for joy. And my voice, this voice that had so often been raised in just a pitiful cry for alms, suddenly changed too. Praise God! I cried it again and again. Praise God! Praise God! Hallelujah! I was so busy hopping around and shouting, not to mention hugging Peter and John, that I failed to notice that a crowd had gathered. I learned then and there that Peter could not resist addressing an audience, especially one that was ready-made, so he started to preach. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You killed the author of life, he said, but God has raised him from the dead, and we are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know is now made strong. He kept preaching for a while, eloquently, I might add. It was all about Jesus, who was foretold by Abraham, Moses, Samuel, and all the prophets the one raised up to wipe away sins and to bless all who listen to him. I can still hear Peter's voice ringing through the courtyard. Turn from your wicked ways. I must have been a funny sight, dancing around in front of the crowd. Some people laughed. I couldn't have done that years ago. But I didn't care they were laughing at me. Joy had overtaken me. I think the Holy Spirit had overtaken me too. I was so full of energy, I couldn't stop. And pretty soon, the people stopped laughing and started clapping, shouting hallelujah in time with me. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. Hallelujah. I couldn't stop. But temple authorities suddenly appeared. They put a quash on things, I must say. I stood by in shock while the guards clapped Peter and John in handcuffs and marched them off to jail. The next day, there was an inquest. Peter and John, before a pretty scary group of guys, Judges, Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas was there too. And there were a bunch of other important looking guys. Well, they dressed important anyway. By what power do you do this, they demanded. I was pretty frightened. Frightened for Peter and John, especially when Peter started talking. Rulers and elders of the people, he said. 
If we're being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a cripple and are asked how he was healed, know this. It is by the name of Jesus of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God has raised from the dead. This man stands before you healed. He was pointing at me. I wanted to shrink. But they took little notice of me. Their anger was rising as Peter continued. The stone you builders rejected has become the cornerstone and salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Do you know what Dr. Luke says about this moment? He tells us that the temple rulers, the high priest Annas, Caiaphas, the whole group of judges were left speechless. They didn't know what to say. Luke writes this, they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized this. They were uneducated men, ordinary men, but they were astonished by them. And they could see that these men had been with Jesus. Let's think about that phrase. They had been with Jesus. Let that sink in for a moment. They had been with Jesus. I've often thought, if only I could say that. That I, like Peter and John, had been with him. I thought that I'd have courage like they had courage. That I'd have an unshakable faith just like theirs. But you know what Peter told me one day? Later, Peter would write this in one of his letters. He said, you, Seth, also have faith, a faith that is greater than gold. And though you haven't seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him. And you are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. So, you're receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Think about that. Our very souls can receive healing. You, know, you may not be a cripple like I was, but perhaps your soul is crippled. Like Peter and John, I don't have silver or gold. But what I do have, I offer to you a faith that is greater than silver or gold. Faith in Jesus, the risen Lord. You don't see him now. But I urge you to believe in him. The result will be an inexpressible and glorious joy. Can you tell? I'm still rejoicing. It constantly wells up within me what Peter talked about, a joy that I can't even describe. Sometimes I read the Psalms of David and I just start singing joyfully. There's a friend of mine who wrote a psalm, who wrote a song based on the psalms. And it's taken from Psalm 40 and Psalm 150. He calls it Psalm 190. You know, add them together. And here's how it goes. 
I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay. And he set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps sure. And he put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty expanse. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with stringed instruments and pipe. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Good morning, church. Can you hear me? I just want to take this time to thank you for all of our blessings and for allowing all of us to be here to worship you today. We pray for our world for peace and for love and to allow our church to flourish. Bless these gifts and all of these gifts that we offer in Jesus' name. Let's stand and sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. More praising, right? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Here's a song, 10,000 Reasons. If you have a reason to bless the Lord today, there's thousands of them out there. One, two, three. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. His holy name, sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass. Whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, oh my soul Oh, my soul Worship his holy name Sing like never before Oh, my soul I'll worship your holy You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. 
10,000 reasons for my honor to find. So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come, still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, Oh, my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, oh, my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name, worship your holy name, Lord, I worship your holy name. Sing like never. Worship your holy name. Worship your holy name. Worship your holy name. So go rejoicing. Rejoicing in the truth that the salvation we receive from our Lord Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth, our resurrected Lord, brings us an inexpressible joy, and it's more valuable than anything. Go in his name. Amen.